Thanks, Father Dave. And great to see all of you. Normally, when I come here for confirmation, it is so overcrowded that people are in, in the vestibule. But we have two confirmations this year, so you can relax a little bit. You know why also you can relax is I'm not going to ask you any questions. <laughs> and I know you must be very disappointed. And, and the reason is, I was a asking some of the um, candidates questions early on in the confirmation season, and I was having a hard time under hearing their answers through the masks. And then I thought, actually, I probably need to get my hearing checked. But, um, but you can be seated. <laughs> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. How many times we have said these words when we say the Nicene Creed at Sunday Mass. We profess that we believe that the Holy Spirit is Lord. In other words, that he is God. The Holy Spirit is truly God, just as the Father is God. And the Son, Jesus Christ, is God. So we adore the Holy Spirit just like we adore God the Father and God the Son. Indeed, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. He is the great gift of the risen Christ. The Holy Spirit opens our minds and our hearts to faith in Jesus as the Son who was sent by the Father. And the Holy Spirit this is particularly beautiful, leads us to friendship and communion with God. At this Mass, we celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation in which you young people will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. When I anoint you with the sacred chrism, you will receive a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit just like the apostles received on the Feast of Pentecost. He will give you special strength, like he gave the apostles, to live your Christian faith with conviction and courage. The Holy Spirit will give you interior gifts, like fortitude, so that you will bear witness to Christ in the world. Fortitude comes from the Latin strength, fortis, strong. The Holy Spirit will help you to be strong in your faith and also strong in your love for God and for others. Jesus often called the Holy Spirit the counselor. Jesus would talk at different times, like in the gospel we just heard, about uh, the Holy Spirit coming, his promise of sending the Holy Spirit. And he would sometimes call him the spirit of truth, the advocate, and the counselor. And that title, counselor, reminds us of another gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of counsel. He will give you this gift, which means he will guide you in your decisions, if you open your minds and hearts to his guidance. I'm always asking for the guidance of the Holy Spirit because I have a lot of decisions to make. And I encourage you as you make decisions in your lives, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to know what is God's will for you. I remember it was when I was confirmed a little younger than you. I was, about, I was 12. I was in seventh grade. And it was when I was confirmed that the idea first came to me that God might be calling me to be a priest. I think that was the Holy Spirit, you know, guiding my mind to start thinking about that. Now, I didn't answer that call until I was a sophomore in college, but I think it was in seventh grade when I was confirmed that I first thought about it. Another thing about the Holy Spirit is he helps us to live in hope. 
You know the three great theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. We don't hear as much about hope as we do about faith and love. Well, the Holy Spirit helps us to grow in faith, hope, and love. But let's look at hope. The Holy Spirit will help you never to despair, to always live with hope in Christ. One of my favorite saints is, is Pope John Paul II, and he once said to young people the following, I plead with you, never ever give up on hope. Never doubt, never tire, and never become discouraged. Be not afraid. When we're close to God, and when Jesus is our best friend, we will always have hope. The Holy Spirit makes sure of this. Now, sometimes in our lives, we, make, we mess up, we might fail. You might fail in a course in school or you might fail in something else, sports or something. And you can get real down on yourselves because when we fail, I know how it feels. You know, or you do something wrong, you can get very, very discouraged and even start thinking negatively about yourself like I'm no good. Well, when you have that kind of discouragement, you know where that comes from? It doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the devil. The Holy Spirit doesn't bring us discouragement. The Holy Spirit brings us encouragement. He brings us hope. You know, for sure, God doesn't want us to be down on ourselves and discouraged. God wants us to be happy. And he wants us to trust in him. Whatever happens in our life, Whatever difficulties or challenges we face, and you know all of us do. It might be in the family, or some difficulty at school, or maybe uh, somewhere else. I mean, there's so many problems in the world. Or when we have sufferings that we have to endure, our hope can endure. The Holy Spirit helps us not to despair. And when we're close to God, then we won't despair or give up. Because the Holy Spirit gives us that inner confidence that God is with us, that he loves and cares for us no matter what happens. And that gives us peace and joy inside. So outside of us, there can be all kinds of um, uh, problems outside of us, but, but we can have peace and joy inside. And that peace and joy comes from hope. And no storm of life can uproot it. Just think of the peace and the joy of the saints. I met Mother Teresa a number of times, and she just exuded peace and joy and she was around suffering all the time and she suffered herself but she had this peace and joy where did it come from you know it came from her hope it came from the holy spirit and we see that in the lives of the saints i bet some of you chose martyrs as your confirmation names think about them the martyrs were able to face torture and even death with courage and hope. That was because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why St. Paul wrote to the Romans what we heard in our first reading tonight. He wrote, hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit instills in us the sure hope that nothing, nothing and no one can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Young people, 
You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit in confirmation so that you can live in faith, hope, and love. And not just for yourselves. You're being sent on mission tonight, like the apostles were sent on mission after they received the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. They didn't stay in the upper room and just stay among themselves. They had the courage to go out because they received that from the Holy Spirit. They went out on mission. They went that very day into the streets of Jerusalem to proclaim the gospel. Before they received the Holy Spirit, they were too afraid. Now they were, were not afraid. And 3,000 people were baptized in Jerusalem on that first Pentecost. Then they went, after they set up uh, the Christian community in Jerusalem, they went into that whole region of Judea, doing the same thing, proclaiming the gospel, telling the people about the resurrection of Jesus. They baptized, they set up communities, and then they went further, they went into Samaria. Eventually they went over to the Mediterranean Sea and got on ships and went to the islands of Cyprus and Crete and to modern day Turkey and over to Greece. Everywhere they went, they were making converts, they were establishing communities, local churches, celebrating the Eucharist, and eventually they went to the very capital of the empire, the city of Rome, where Saints Peter and Paul proclaimed the gospel and were martyred. And from that time on, the Catholic Church has been centered in Rome because Peter and Paul were buried there. It's kind of remarkable when you think about it. That's, that's in the span of 30 years between Pentecost and the martyrdom of Saints Peter and Paul. And the Catholic Church was established all through that Mediterranean region in a part of the Middle East. And then in succeeding centuries, as you know, the successors of those apostles spread the gospel even further, all through Europe and into Asia and all through Africa. The church grew and grew eventually in, in the um, late 1400s, early 1500s. The gospel was proclaimed and the church established in the Americas, North and South America, 520 years ago. And then here in Indiana, here in Fort Wayne, it was the early 1800s. And now there are over 1.2 billion Catholics in the world. It all began in that upper room in Jerusalem with the descent of the Holy Spirit who sent them on mission. Confirmation is the sacrament of Christian mission. Young people, you're going to receive the same Holy Spirit that descended upon the apostles on Pentecost. And you're called to share in that mission of bringing the gospel to the world, beginning with the people that you meet in your everyday life. And you might say, Bishop Rhodes, how, how am I going to be a missionary? And I'm glad you would ask that question. You're already disciples of Jesus, or you wouldn't be here. Well, tonight you become missionary disciples. You're being sent on mission. So how do you live this mission? Well, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can show people Jesus Christ by the way you speak, by the way you act, by your kindness and generosity, by your works of love and mercy, by your living the teachings of Jesus, animated by the Holy Spirit. The saints lived their faith in beautiful ways. They were outstanding witnesses of Christ. That's why they're saints. I encourage you to try to imitate the virtues of your patron saint. When I was confirmed, I chose St. John the Apostle as my confirmation name. And ever since then, ever since the age of 12, I've prayed to him. 
I've asked him, he's, he's my special friend in heaven. I'm always asking him to intercede for me. I can't wait to meet St. John face to face. I feel like we're already buddies. And I encourage you to be devoted to your patron saint as your special friend in heaven. Hope does not disappoint, St. Paul says. Well, young people, you give me a lot of hope. Today, you welcome the Holy Spirit as the guide of your souls. And he'll always be there for you, always. He'll give you strength when you need it. He'll give you hope when you're discouraged. He'll even help you to pray as you ought, because it's not always easy to pray. You can begin your prayer by saying, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. And all we have to do is open ourselves, open our hearts to the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us in confirmation. And you know, if you do, you know what's going to happen? Your lives will bear much good fruit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I imagine you know all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, or fruits of the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. They're listed in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. This is how you know if you're truly living by the Spirit. You'll see these fruits in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. That's 10, and there are only nine, so I must have made one up. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's my prayer for you, that um, your lives will bear those good fruits. I pray that each and every one of you will become a saint. That's why you're being confirmed so that you will grow in holiness and become saints. <laughs>